speaking up loud. I don't speak like this in the office, do I? No. Right. Speak up. Speak up until you shout. Uh, so basically, uh, this is how like the structure of uh, a rail track is. And then, as you can see, the, the ballast, the rail, a sleeper, the chip, the clip, chair, fish plate, all that kind of stuff. Okay. No. But well, stop, yes. stop there, because that's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Do me, do me a favour. Can you just go up, go up to the screen? Okay, we don't want really you to do this. Go up to the screen and point to things and tell us what they are because we really can't read the words from here. Mm -hmm. So what, what are we? Tell us what's on that uh, picture. All right. So this bit here is like the little corner that goes like that. Speak up. So this uh, bit here, so it's like going that to that. That's like a pad. A pad, like, yeah. Yeah, it's like going, it's like going, uh, going inwards as well, like so in the, the middle. The yeah. pad is that constructed yeah. in what what material? Is that concrete uh, it'll or metal? In, yeah, it'll be metal. It'll be either iron or steel. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, and then there's it's, it's actually a piece of metal. Okay, with holes drilled in it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then you put a bolt through it, which you take, it's called a rag bolt, R A G. And you put it through, screw it, and it goes either into what? What are those brown things? We don't know what they are. What's those brown things? Brown, yeah. yeah, those two long brown things. Oh, these. Oh, yeah. Those, yeah what are they? Those, those, uh, those are sleepers. Sleepers. Yes. Okay. Those are called sleepers. They help support uh, the uh, rails, like the tracks. Okay. What are those sleepers made of? Uh, the, uh, well, these ones are made of wood, but not uh, but in for more modern rails. And they now use um, like uh, some uh, like uh, steel. They use, uh, they use steel now for more modern rails. You get steel sleepers as well. Yeah. Concrete, oh, concrete, concrete, oh, concrete, concrete. No steel. It's, it's no concrete. steel. Concrete, concrete. Reinforced it's concrete. Reinforced. Yeah. Concrete reinforced. Reinforcement is the steel inside the concrete. Yeah. So you first form the steel. And then you pour concrete into it to make it to reinforce it. So oh, okay. it reinforce concrete. All right. So what we have there then is we have two wooden sleepers, yeah. Yeah. And then you've got what are those long things there? The long grey things. Well, yeah. What's that long grey thing? Uh, that's the chair and clip. Chair. Okay. So the, so the, and is that a rail? Uh, yeah. The, the, yeah. This thing like going across there. That's the rail. Right, so the rail sits inside the chair, yeah? Yeah, yeah. And then the chair is bolted with rag bolts yeah. onto the wooden sleeper, yes? Yeah, and, uh, yeah, okay. and then they also, and then, uh, I think there's also a bit uh, onto the side of the rail there, onto the uh, pad, uh, that it gets bolted into as well, to like help keep uh, the sleeper and uh, rail stuff together. Okay. Right, so. so Oh, well, no. I was going to ask them from yeah. a construction point of view, how is that constructed? Because I see all the pads, the sleepers, the rails, the chair. So, in terms of how that is then constructed, what comes first? You do you lay the, the actual ballast? Because I suppose the ballast, sub -ballast is and ballast. I've never heard that word before. Oh, you said it's it's ballast? Ballast? No. So yeah, but, so, yeah. so you know. Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but so how is that constructed? In what order would that be constructed? If you were constructed like the structure Could you give the a basic structure? picture? Yeah. So uh, first it would be the ballast, uh -huh. that's like the ground bit. Uh -huh. And then afterwards it would be the sleeper. And then if you and then you would put the rail and then afterwards you would actually put the rail on and then uh, you would put the pad in between it and then the chair. And then you'd like use rag bolts uh, to uh, like, put it in. So what's the fish? Yeah. How it's called? A fish. That's uh, that's to connect the rails because obviously you can't have one continuous. It's like, posturing system. Ah. Yeah. It's called right. posturing. So it connects it together. Both. Good question. What is a fish plate? Okay. A fish plate now, is a. If you if you knew if you knew exactly what it was, you'd answer this way. So, the fish plate. If you remember yesterday. When we were talking about the simple track circuit, do you remember the electricity comes into the right hand running rail mm -hmm. and I said that it runs a certain distance yeah. Yeah. and then we stop it going any further because we broke the rail. Yeah. So how do you insulate the rails from each other? You use 
fish plate. Ah. And that fish plate is made of, used to be a asbestos before it was dangerous. Mm -hmm. So it's normally now plate made of plastic or reinforced plastic. Uh, so the current here, here in our project. Yeah, don't, they, tell, him, don't tell him too much about yes, the extent. No, no, they were using the fish plate. Uh, and uh, as a temporary fixing, fixing between two rails, yeah. right. and we got you know a one pedal accident because of this play, fish plate. We'll tell you about that later. Yeah. <laughs> so what? So what? So that fish plate, yeah. Some metallic that, that joins that joins the two rails two where rails. they're broken. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so where you break the rails to introduce what's called a, a signaling circuit. Yeah. And then you put a fish plate outside, fish plate inside, bolt it together, and then you have what's called an end joint or a piece of plastic goes there. And now the electricity gets to it, can't go any further, it's plastic, yeah. goes over to the left hand running rail, comes back. Until it gets to the fish plate and the yeah. gap on the other side, and then it comes back and creates a circuit. It creates another question why is the distance between the fish plates? What is the distance between the It's about. No, as uh, from one fish plate to the next fish plate. What do you mean? They are also using part oh, It all depends on you want the signaling section. Ah, that's the one. And depends on the fish plate and the purpose of the fish, yeah, fish exactly. plate. So because what we were plate. using it before the de-stressing, you know, and joining the two rails. Right. Yeah. Through so welding and... What, he wants to know how long is the signaling section between, you know... The problem there is if you're using the current electricity, mm -hmm. we, we use about 12 volts for signaling normally. Now 12 volts... Yeah, AC or DC. That's if, if and if it's DC, it doesn't go very far. Mm -hmm. So you can't make your signaling system right. or your signaling circuit very long mm -hmm. because the electricity just gets it and goes. Oh, I'm not going any further. Yeah. So you get not short so. distances. Oh, okay. Anyway, that's another lesson. Okay. Right. Okay. So just quickly recap. He will give us a detail and then yeah, the structure. Just, just recap that diagram, because that is an interesting diagram. So, the balance, and the balance is the bottom layer, then, uh, then the sleeper, uh, which is made out of wood, yeah. uh, got, uh, like, is above it, and then uh, after we do, uh, do liner rails along parallel uh, on the sleeper, and then you would stick, uh, stick it all together with the chair, the uh, fish plate, clip, and the pad. All right. Now, I'm interested as a student, and I had these type of questions when I used to do this back in 1973, when I was at the train centre. So the students are interested, I'm interested. Is that a hard wood or a soft wood? My next question. Because of well, the strength, of the strength and, and rain and it rots. So, do you think it's hard wood or soft wood? I would say hard, actually no, I would say soft wood. Because, uh, uh, because Does your brother agree? Do you agree? No. What do you think? I don't know. Well, think about it. Hardwood. Hardwood, okay. I tend to agree with you. Why do you think it's hardwood and not softwood? Because it's a train on top of it. It's soft, isn't it? Okay. But, again, if you're doing physics, you could say if it's softwood, then that really absorbs more of the vibration. Yeah, of course. Okay, and if it's hardwood, then the vibration's got to crack it. Yeah. So if you're going down that road, but again, a good, good. What do you reckon, Mo? Well, exactly for the reason we just said, the yeah. hard wood would be able to absorb the actual the, the impact of the train, right. not just for that, for the yeah, in this country in particular, <laughs> the sunshine, the rain, yeah. and the different uh, uh, climate changes that it goes through. So in this country, because of the the climate, could dry out wood very quickly. Yeah. Do we have wooden sleepers in this country? You don't know that. Do we have wooden sleepers in this country? No, it's the... Uh, yeah, ones, in this country, yes. Some. Yeah. Yeah. Majority of country has the yeah. Some. Yeah. In the old uh, regions. Yeah, in the old regions. But and most, and also most railways now... For the concrete. temporary tracks, mm -hmm. we are using the... the well, wooden I saw one. the machine that lays the sleepers, you yeah. see, so... Yeah, brilliant, isn't it? It's brilliant. Yeah. That should be quite good. Right, so to, I had all these questions when I was a youngster like you. So, the answer is, technically, it is hardwood, and then the next thing is people used to say, where did it come from? Initially that wood in the UK came from Australia and it was, it was Australian wood and it was called Yarrow wood. Okay. Now if it's, what are you looking at? It's a number of people just walking Oh, right, okay. <laughs> it's meant to be into this building. <laughs> that wood, it's, it's wood, it gets, it gets too dry sometimes, it could catch fire perhaps. So again, 
before they use it, they soak it, mm-hmm. and they soak it in creosote. Ah. So all of the sleepers in the UK uh, are, 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 are soaked in like a, it's an oily substance. Uh-huh. Fire protected. Fire protected. Yes. So yeah. they're better. But what wood? Which wood? You well, as I say, originally it was Australian yarra uh-huh. wood. Okay. Okay, but then it became British oak to British a certain oak extent. Oak a really yeah. hard wood. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. a lot more Quick question. Uh, I saw that one. Where's my pen? <laughs> okay. Yawn. Five star for every time he yawns. Yeah, Look, five that's eight and a half today. <laughs> a quick question for you. As a trainer, put your trainer's hat on. We're back here. You're down there. What could you have done with that picture? Uh, can't hear you. Make it interactive. Well, you can make it interactive. You could also... Make it bigger. Because it made it bigger? Yeah. Okay, well, well done. Okay, come back. Let's see what the next one is. There we go. Right, so, yeah, the train tracks are made up of platform steel rails uh, that are supported by timber or pre stressed concrete uh, sleepers, which are laid out on a crunched stone balance. That's it. Pre-stressed concrete sleepers. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh. Pre-stressed. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and then uh, the train tracks aren't really made to. They like the train tracks on normal. They're not really made to suit the evolution of like normal trains today. Because back then, uh, trains only went about like twenty-nine miles per hour. But nowadays, it can go up to like two hundred. Uh, so. Uh, then uh, they can cope with it by uh, welding the train tracks and uh, using the uh, sleeper to pull for it. So. Right, can I just tell a quick story here? Yeah? <coughs> what that is saying is that in the old days, when we first started putting these down, the length of rail that you could use was basically determined by the weight of it and how many men you had to lift it into position. So it's, it was normally, in the old days, about 50 metres. 150 feet long, okay? And in America, it was all done by Chinese laborers. Mm -hmm. So you'd have Chinese laborers lifting it up, and they would put it down onto those wooden sleepers. On the sleepers, you've got the metal chair, so it sits in the metal chair, Mm -hmm. and then between the chair and the rail, there's a gap. And that allows for the rail, if it gets hot, to slightly expand, and then in the evening to get colder. So, so to stop the track from wobbling in the chair, they put in a block of wood, and it was just called a block. And every day and every night, someone would walk along the track with a big hammer, and he would just look down, pick up the wooden block, because it gets cold at night, so it shrinks, falls out. So his job every night was to go along, pick up the wooden block, bang. And they used to do that on London Underground when I was a driver in 75. Wow. Okay. Nowadays they've replaced them with what's called pandrol clips. So they're, they're, they're uh, elasticated steel, pre, pre-stressed, mm-hmm. and they are put in the gap, mm-hmm. and as the, as the rail gets hotter, mm-hmm. they mm-hmm. expand, and as it gets colder, they contract, mm-hmm. they don't fall out. Mm-hmm. So the old wooden blocks have been replaced with these steel clips. Mm-hmm. Right. Interesting. Interesting. Now the next thing to tell you on that, what you've sold us there, is that that used to be laid, as I say, in about 150 foot lengths. Mm. But nowadays they've got a, an actual machine, yeah, that runs along the track, and on it is a long piece of rail, maybe a kilometre long, mm. and it lays it into men help it go into the chairs, mm. and then instead of putting in a, uh, um, a fish plate to, to connect it with bolts, they stretch it. So they lay it down and then they actually stretch the rail and then they put another piece and they weld it together, flash weld it. Yeah, flash okay. butt, butt welding. They, it's called flash butt welding mm. and they weld it together. So now, and that's what we do out here on this yeah, rail. Later they are doing this uh, so you may, stressing. You may find out there that there's a length of rail which is two and a half kilometers long. Right. Here we have around, I think, 250 okay. meter wow. in our... And they stretch it, and they stretch it, and they yeah. stretch it, and then they weld it. Ah. So those rails out there every day expand and contract, mm. but they don't break. So that's what that's, so that's where it's saying they're not necessarily 
uh, suiting the evolution of trains. Good one. Next one. So uh, these are jointed rails uh, because there is no alternative. However, it, was, it wasn't really financially effective because uh, it always needed lubricating for it, uh, for it to like stay stable. And then on top of that, it also needed hit, uh, heavy maintenance a lot uh, to, uh, to prevent uh, geometrical defects in the joint. I suppose because of the environment, they actually made it dry. Yeah. yeah. I suppose it depends why they needed it. Yeah. And then because of the uh, geometrical defect of the heavy maintenance, that's how it yeah, so when they're talking geometric, they talk about heat conditions, mm -hmm. okay? Um, oh, interesting, okay, good. Anything else? No, that's it. Uh, next one, this. Did, did you happen to read what they call sleepers in America? Because they don't call them sleepers in America. <coughs> no. No, they call ties. They call, they call them a tie. Oh, a tie. A tie. T-I-E, yeah. like a tie. Yeah? They, they, the Americans, yeah. We call in, in here. We've got things called uh, switches and, and crossovers, yeah? yeah. In English, we call them points. They've all, they they were called points. Or, or and the Americans call it a, a, a switchover, okay? Yeah, switches and, and switches. turnouts and, and turnouts. We don't call them turnouts. They call see. Points. Do you remember on the way to Medina, you saw the actual railroad line? You just we drove past. It. So I was asleep. Okay. <laughs> in any case, you would have seen the sleeper. Uh, not the, the, the ballast that do they because you can actually see it through in the desert. There you can are actually see the yeah. actual the ballast and, and the actual there are two types of tracks mainly. One is called ballasted track mm -hmm. and another is called uh, slab track. Slab track. Mm -hmm. And the slab track is where it's as you're watching the yeah, station. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And also uh, and I think you're going to talk about this because you mentioned it as as a, in in this country um, you get a lot of high wind and you get a lot of sand. Sense. And if the sand gets blown into the ballast, it's, yeah, it's, it's what we call contaminated ballast. Yeah. And it makes it difficult. And it's because the, the ballast, when you put the ballast together, it's tamped. Yeah. You put a machine into it and you agitate it like this so that all the little boulders join together and it basically is like dry concrete. So that's what tamping is. So they shake it and it becomes solid. Oh. Now, if you get the sand blown in it, the sand particles get between the boulders and they push it apart, okay? Uh, and that means that you have to go out and do the maintenance and do more tamping all the time yeah. because the, the sand is blown into the ballast. It's oh. dune sand, they are calling. Yeah. Yeah. So therefore, if you've got an area, as we have, which is prone to sand drifts, the wind blows the sand onto the railways, and we know exactly where that is, mm -hmm. then what we do is we put in slab tracks and we put oh, all sorry. of our track as concrete mm -hmm. so that the sand can't blow in the ballast. Oh, interesting. And, that's, and so we've got slab tracked areas where there is specific wind. sand blowing yeah, the wind in the ocean. Because of the gym. That's why you have slab track. Interesting. Hmm? Embedded track, big track. Big, uh, big track, yes. Yeah. Interesting. See, it's interesting to see very things in so, there, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, very much so. Okay, what are you going to tell us about the sleepers or the ties? Uh, Oh, that was quite nice. Yeah, so uh, the block there, a bit, the bit of the, the main support to the curve material, and then in between the uh, balance and the actual rails. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, uh, and then the most of them are made out of wood, and then uh, how the new rails are to use uh, steel, which is apparently faster. That's what it said on the. Yeah, the old pre stretch concrete. Yeah. And then uh, the purpose is to help support the rail and keep the rails straight parallel. And then, uh, uh, they were made out of wood uh, because they, they provide a resilient track with excellent dynamic configuration. And uh, they also are very effective in noise and vibration reduction. And, uh, and uh, um, it, it was proved that uh, pre stressed concrete, except there was better than wood, so it got replaced with all the cubes instead. And, uh, because there was a uh, different expense uh, since uh, the discovery of a lot of iron ore in the Cleveland mine in 1850, which I talked about yesterday as well. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And, uh, 
the it's used first in Australia in the in eighteen ninety. Yeah, I know. Okay, that's freaking excellent. I'm interested now. Okay, we've got the tracks, Aman. Yeah. Yeah. And and what rolls and runs along the tracks? The train. Yeah. What part of the train rolls on the track on the rails? That rolls. Yeah. What rolls on the rails? The round things. Yeah. The wheels. Excellent. Uh, why don't the why don't the the wheels why don't they fall off the track? Because it's very difficult to steer in each train, as I tell you. Especially at three hundred kilometers an hour. So, so how does the wheel like stay on the track? Special made wheels are like they curve in uh, curve in Go on, so explain more. The rail and then when you move it just follows the rail's path. Mo, how do you know it? Does it as it as it stay on the track? As I guess, I would say Mo. As, as you said before, with the, with the wheels that are specifically specially designed for the track itself, they have other arms connecting to the actual the wheel and it's all interconnected, um, which follows the path. I'm not particularly uh, familiar with it, but as I guess, with the sophistication of the actual wheels itself and the suspension, uh, it allows it to actually grip onto the, 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 uh, the rail itself uh, to, to move along the track. Okay. So the wheel is like that. Okay. Uh -huh. So that's the wheel. Yeah. And that's the outside. Mm -hmm. And then that's the inside. And the in So you've got a flange. Uh -huh. yeah. So you've got a, sc a scalloped flange. Okay. And that stays on the road. Ah, right. So, so that's the gap, essentially. It, the it's so you, yeah. So 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 what you so you've got the weight of the train, which is about three hundred tons, mm -hmm. pushing on the wheels. The wheels are scalloped, like that. So you've got a, what a face and a flange, mm -hmm. and that flange is on the inside of the rails. Right. Okay. So the train physically can't Move fall up. off. Yeah. Because the wheel is technically lower on the inside, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, and it can't fall off. Mm -hmm. it's, it's all connected together. Yeah. 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 Well, you, you want to do this? Okay. Right, so carry on. It's finished. Okay. You're going to get the rest of this tonight. I will do. Okay. <laughs> Continue recording. Because I'll be. Uh... Oh, are you recording, mate? Yeah. 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 Are you recording? Yeah. Okay, carry on. What's the next bit? That's good. My list. The next one is the ballast. Speak up a little bit about that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Next one is the ballast. Oh, wait, it's going to be shit on that. Don't worry. So, yeah, they're basically the multiple like, little rocks uh, that are underneath the rails and the sleepers. And then, uh, then to support the rails too. And then, uh, it helps by keeping the sleepers still, because uh, they surround the sleepers. Yeah. Like, like the, um, just underneath the rails, so they don't interfere with the train. And then, uh, so, and also since there's gaps in between the rocks, uh, it helps uh, the sound and vibration to get through easy, which puts uh, which puts less of the strain on sleepers. Stop there a second, let me just tell you, if you go onto YouTube uh, and if you type in YouTube and say uh, bouncy rails on railways, what you'll find is that the ballast, um, it absorbs vibration. Yeah. Yeah. So you can actually see lots of trains on YouTube, and they, and especially in India, Pakistan unfortunately, <laughs> um, the, the ballast is old and hasn't been tamped. Yeah. And so the, right, uh, the train sort of, see, you see it sort of bounce up and down the rail. And you see the rail going into the soil like this. Yeah. Okay. And then it's crash. And that's and that's simply derail and crash and. And then they crash. So that's where you get what we call bouncing rail rods. And that's because they haven't tamped ballast for it. Here. The purpose of the ballast is yeah. to to absorb the, the vibration, the vibration, noise. The vibration. Noise. Of the noise. So if you're interested, just YouTube it two seconds, and these clips are all there on YouTube. Okay, next one. And, uh, it also helps if uh, a load of water, if so you can pull it onto the train track, because uh, it just takes down 
Yeah. So, if it, so, if it's, so if it's rainy, the rain just goes down, goes through the ballast. Yeah, it, it doesn't sit on the wooden sleeper if it's wood, and it doesn't yeah. rot the wood. And also, if there's gaps in the ballast, yeah. uh, then you're not going to get seeds from plants that are going to grow in there because there's no technical soil. Yeah. So these are all good reasons for ballast. Excellent. Yeah. And then uh, it's also for vegetation because uh, it can just sink again. That's right. It sinks against lots. Yeah. So and uh, the word ballast actually comes from a nautical term that's used to stabilise the ship that drops. Uh, so, yeah, when it anchors down the way it moves. What? The nautical term. Yeah, so, because I'm a sailor. So, when, they, when, when, when people started using ships and, 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 and little boats, um, and it's made of wood, okay, and so it wobbles like this in a wave. So, what people did initially was they put old rocks in the bottom of the boat, okay, and, and so you put weight in the mid bottom of the boat. And so that stabilizes it and stops it rocking so much. Nowadays, we don't have rocks in the bottom of the boat, so we have a piece of metal called a keel. So you have a big piece of metal on the boat, hanging in the middle at the bottom, called a keel, and that stops it wobbling and rolling. So that word for stones in boats was called ballast. So they just borrowed the same word from the nauticals uh, when they developed it. Good. And then uh, it's actually comparative to maintain the ballast because if, uh, if you don't, then it'll eventually become degraded. Like you said earlier. Yeah. And then, uh, uh, and then which makes it then not be able to drain like all the things that it actually comes down like uh, vegetation and grain. Uh, and then which there's some there's some actually underneath the ballast called the sub ballast, which is a, a, a bit thinner than uh, the ballast. No ballast. Uh, it's a little bit just a little bit smaller stones, isn't it? Yeah. Line, yeah, thing. compacted with the. Yeah, so you get so you start off with a, a bed of very small stones, and you compact it, and then you put the bigger stones on. Okay, so that gives loose. you a firm base. Yeah. Okay, what we call a sub ballast. Yeah, I think if I remember right, the sub ballast is around fifty centimeters thick. That's right. Yeah. And then, uh, the actual ballast itself is around thirty forty five, isn't it? I thought uh, I thought it was hundred. Yeah, hundred more, more than this. Oh, you're talking centimeters, yeah. Yeah, centimeters. Uh, you're, you're talking millimeters. I'm talking centimeters. Yeah, that's right. So he's even got the size of the stones as well. Yeah. Brilliant. Well done. And then, uh, yeah, and then it'll uh, it'll stabilize the ship and then it'll stop rotting. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, the ballast will actually stop the debris that's coming from it, and which degrades that as well. Yeah. So eventually, if it keeps going on without being placed or fixed, then uh, even the train will just uh, fall off. What did they use to maintain the ballast? They just take out the stones and replace them with more. What they, what they do is, is this, we have a machine called a tamping machine. It looks like a big old locomotive and then it goes along very slowly and as it goes along it's got these arms that prod like this. And as it goes along it will prod into the ballast, train stops, it shakes up and down, so all the rocks, all the ballast around it resettles, okay? Then it pulls them up and it goes along again, stops, puts the arms in, yeah. And it's called a tamping machine. They call that tamping. And that's how you maintain the ballast. That happens every night out there on our railway no. where we've got ballast. Yeah, yeah. We've got 500 kilometres. Yeah. And then we've got that on the upside and on the downside. So we've got 1,000 kilometres of track. So we've got a lot of ballast. And you'll see it when you've got the train. Okay. Interesting. It yeah, so the sub ballast is the red, isn't it? Yeah. And then the blue is the ballast. Yeah, and then the pink, uh, they actually said it here, but I can't read it. Yeah. I can read it up there if you want. That's okay. We, we, we've just talked about it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, this is the seven packs that I'm Oh, right, okay. Oh, right, so let's stop a minute. So that was. Ballast, you learned quite a lot there. Yeah, that was a lot, yeah. I remember I, I, I've never known, like, because I've seen the ballast and I knew it was there. You, you know, there's stones in it, but yeah. you're, you're not sure <laughs> what they're there for. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. just, I, I was thinking it did probably support the rail and stuff, but, but like, uh, like you said, like, it stops the rain and uh, grows uh, vegetation and, uh, what's it called? 
and it absorbs vibration and, and it absorbs noise. Yeah. Um, so don't you know? No, that was excellent. Okay. What, yeah. So what, what 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 facts you got for us today? These are things that you don't even think about, do you, really? Yeah. Until someone stops and, and makes it uh, interesting for you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Firstly, uh, yeah. an Indian girl in India got beaten to death by an extended family, and it's for a pretty stupid reason. They got they got she got beaten to death for wearing a pair of jeans. Yeah. Read that. And then she and then uh, 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 the extended family told her mother that they were taken to the hospital. Then the actually talked her in the river. And then that's just like that. There's nothing you can say about that. I mean, that's just wicked. Yeah. Yeah. What causes that? I don't know. Did, did, did just, like, did, 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 what? Why did they do that? Uh, they, did, they didn't say specific reasons. They just said, uh, because they haven't like discovered everything yet, the case is still going on. Why do you think they don't like her wearing jeans? It's a cultural issue. Thank you. Mm. Yeah. It's a naughty, nasty, cultural, mm. religious, bloody thing, isn't it? And so we won't talk about religion. That's what's done that. Dreadful. Okay, next one. <coughs> So, uh, researchers found satellite photos uh, of what is presumed uh, yeah. to be a Chinese missile silo uh, that is under construction currently. Oh. Where, so, where, uh, obviously, if it's a Chinese satellite, yeah, I suppose they found it in China, did they? Yeah, it's like, uh, if I remember right, I think it's around northwest China, like, like the northwest region. What's a silo? What's a uh, missile silo? It's, like, it's basically just like, um, but it's like a. A place where it's like a shoot on the site thing. So it's basically just like a res um, restricted place where they're not where only people who are allowed to go into. It's a oh, shuttle, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's it's slightly bigger than the rocket itself, yeah. and then it's it's it dug into the ground, isn't it? Yeah. And then they put the rocket in it, and then they put a cover over it, which opens. Yeah. And that is technically that's a silo. And that, that device called a silo, they make them in metal in America and other countries. And that's where you fill up with water or flour or corn, yeah, or cement. And then you open the bottom and it all pops out. So that's a silo. Okay. So they found one of those, have they? Yeah. Through satellite photos. Yeah. It's just those Chinese are they're, they're cunning bastards, aren't they? Catching bombs. Yeah, they, they we, we all do it. There's silos in the UK as well. You just don't yeah. know where they are. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, I think there's a lot of them in the islands as well, aren't they? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Alright, so they found another one. What's yeah. the next one? Dubai? Then, uh, yeah, Dubai. Uh, uh, you know how they have my made islands? Right? Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah, they've actually uh, had this mega project that's been going on for two decades yeah. uh, called the Heart of Europe. And then uh, it's nearing completion, and it's just like a whole bunch. It's like the it's like the Canary Islands, but like the islands of Dublin and their landing. Right. So, so, so it's like it's a resort. It's just so it's a island island. resort where there's multiple islands, and like, uh, and then uh, yeah, that's just. Yeah. Have you guys have you been to Dubai yet? No, my dad has. Yeah. You've got to go. Yeah. I told your father the other day. As soon as they lift these COVID flighty things. It's an hour and a half away. Yeah. Well, it's a bit more than that for me, about two hours. Um, I lived there for 10 years. Yeah? Have you heard of an expression where they say it's the dog's bollocks? Um, no? The mutt's nuts? <laughs> the dog's danglers? <laughs> <laughs> These are all London expressions for it is bloody good. Uh, okay? So, Dubai is the dog's bollocks. It is the best place here, honestly. Um, and they've got islands there made from sand. So what they're saying here is that that one is being uh, near completion. Yeah, no, it's like a whole bunch of islands, so it's multiple. Yeah, 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 there's, there's uh, I lived on one, on, yeah. it's called the Palm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Palm Jumeirah, I used to live there. Anyway, get your dad to take it. Another question for you. Yeah. It says up there, what does it say in... What, mega project? Yeah, how long does it say? Uh, two decades. Two decades, yeah. Yeah, two decades. So yeah. Years. How long is a decade? You agree? Yeah. So a decade is 10 years, yeah? Yeah, decades yeah. and yeah. centuries. How long is a generation? It's a century. Oh, no. yeah. It's between 25 and 30 
it's, they classify generation as, as, as sons then yeah. having their own children. Yeah. So a generation is between 20, about 30 years. Yeah. A lot of people don't know that. Either. Yeah. Surprising, is it? Okay, brilliant. Yeah. So I didn't know that they were going to finish that, but it is finishing. Yeah. Next one. And then uh, a fish that is immune to piranhas uh, is, uh, is called freshwater fish. Yeah. They uh, were saved from extinction recently. And then it was uh, one of the largest uh, ones that I've ever found in the, uh, in the Amazon River basin. And then it's 10 feet long and it weighs almost 500 pounds. Christ, that's the hell. That is a big fish. And there's actually a picture of someone holding it. It's a song. They said to have a bullet, to bullet have a bulletproof skin. skin. Yeah, bulletproof skin. And it can breathe air. It can breathe air and, and it can go and it can go one day without water. So it can breathe And breathe that's a fish. That's a fish. Yeah, that's a fish. Usually takes. Now I'm gonna Google that later because I'm yeah. interested to find out it's more about that. It's, it's on the internet. Just go on CNN and then type it and then uh, just scroll all the way down. It was on well I, as you know, I, I look at CNN and the BBC when I have my lunch shortly. So hang on a minute, stay with that one. I can't believe it's, it can spend a day out in water. Yeah, it usually takes... Because it's got gills, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's what they used to breathe. Oh, okay. It's like a superhuman fish. It's what? Like, it says there, piranha, it's a freshwater fish, isn't it? Yeah, it's called freshwater fish, and it's immune to piranhas, because uh, it has a bulletproof skin. So, and then uh, piranhas like, can, uh, can't really bite through it. What's unusual about a piranha fish? Any idea? Yeah, like a frog. It eats you live. So don't you, you never swim near piranhas. They've got huge teeth. They're only about this big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they all swim around in shoals. Yeah. And if you're in there, they will just come and eat you. The most of us have got it older than you found really nasty fish for piranhas. Wait, Amon, did must have to uh, go over a pool of piranhas? Uh, it was like year six and then oh, it was like yeah, yeah. yeah, it was a school trip. I don't know what it's called. Little, little adventure trips you have. It's like little piranhas and they went up. Like, yeah, they're like little, uh, little Yeah, yeah, yeah. They walk over a pool. They just walk them over and they go. I don't think they just had any when, when I was in Dubai, uh, uh, living there, there there's a, a, a one of the like, fun fair places you can go to and a swimming pool. And you, what you do is you pay 10 sar and you go and put your feet in a, in, a, in a very 